stupidly epic. <laughs> Hi there everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be reviewing Ease 8 Lacrimosa of Dana for the PS4. So, um, Ease is a Japanese RPG series by Falcom, who are total like legends at like action RPGs. Uh, the series has been going for a while. It's still kind of fairly niche in the West, though. Like I think, I think it's like a lot bigger in Japan than it is in the West. Um, they're fantastic games, though, and they are total like action, like proper action-based, like action RPGs. It's just really quick, uh, fast-paced hack and slash sort of action game. Uh, kind of like uh, Croxley or Sigma or like run around kind of Monster Hunter style, you know, like uh, that. Monster Hunter is a bit slower paced because it's a bit more intricate with kind of like the mechanics and all that. This is this really is kind of like a button masher kind of RPG. Um, it's really, really good though. <laughs> See, I was kind of hesitant to, to begin with because uh, these uh, the Ease games, I've played Ease 1 and 2 and I've played a bit of Oath and Felgana, which is the remake of the third one. Uh, I've played uh, Ease, the remake of Ease 4 as well on the PS Vita. I've done a review for that back on our like old website. Uh, the <laughs> I was a bit hesitant with this game to start off with, though, because when I first seen the, the style of it, the, the way it looked, I kind of really like the look of the old games where like the main character is like a wee chibi character and you're kind of looking like isometric kind of down on the, on the like top down sort of like on the map sort of thing. But uh, definitely not like bothered about that anymore because like as soon as I started playing this game, I was like, "This totally feels like ease. This is a, this is a totally, this is totally an ease game. This is like the next step for ease." So, like, first of all, uh, hooray for this game because uh, <laughs> three, two, one, hooray! Options for dubbing, like you, like if you're a, if you're into your Japanese language, you can uh, you can choose Japanese uh, for your audio. If you don't care, you just prefer to just kind of listen to the story in English. That's fine, but yeah, this is the basic uh, sort of standard of the gameplay, guys. It's it really is just kind of run around hacky slashy. The game the the, the world map itself is really really big. It's, uh, it's the same kind of setup to Ease 4 though, like you, you kind of chart in this kind of unknown land, you're like, you've, you, the basic setup to the story is, is you've uh, crash landed, your boat's crash landed on a, on a deserted island and uh, you, you as Adol Kristen and uh, with a little band of uh, fellow sort of travellers, you're going around this island and you're, and you're sort of mapping it out and charting it and uh, the, with the ultimate goal of trying to get off the island with all the survivors from the ship. Uh, but yeah, uh, <laughs> so, so that's the basic story setup. And if you were worried that the, the game's gone in a sort of like weird direction, like kind of I was in terms of the art direction, like kind of like just, just the way the game kind of looks, don't worry, do not fear. This game is absolutely, <laughs> without a doubt, an ease game. So if you, if you don't know what that means, don't worry. Uh, th this is specifically like just letting letting fans of the older games know that this feels exactly how you would want it to feel for an Ease game. Very very action heavy. Like it it, it feels like Oath and Felgana and Ease Four and all that. It's like but it's just like three D. You just kind of run around in three D. The game's map is big. It's really big. Uh, <laughs> But it's segmented off, kind of like Monster Hunter. You know, like it's it's not like one big, huge open world map. It is a big map, but it's uh, it's split up into like little zones. 
So like you'll you'll get your little wee dotted line between each zone, so you you, you go to the next zone and it'll load up the next zone. And it's like it's, it is a continuation of the one big map, but they've sort of like segmented it off. I think that might be because, uh, and, and this brings me up to my second point. Uh, the game's visuals is kind of like it kind of looks like the game was made for the Vita in mind. The kind of like everything kind of looks a bit low poly. It has, it has that kind of PS Vita specifically kind of look, you know. Uh, it's it's, ama it's amazing what they've been able to do with the game, like visually on the PS4, like it like it, it looks crisp and clean and beautiful on the PS4, but in terms of uh, character animations and kind of like just polygon count and things like that, it looks a bit low poly. It doesn't look like it's taxing the PS4 much, so I'm assuming it was kind of made primarily for the PS Vita and then kind of like you know. Uh, at the same time, sort of ported to the PS4 at the at the same time as like during development, you know. Um, game looks fantastic, as you can see. It looks beautiful, like the, the, the texture work and all that is really really nice. Uh, it 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 does look like a, a kind of Monster Hunter -y kind of game, like like to the same standard as maybe Monster Hunter like four or something like that. Just in just in terms of like the the way it kind of looks. Um, yeah, very arcadey, hack and slashy, like quick paced, very quick paced. Uh, if you've played Croxlayer Sigma, uh, the game's got that sort of system where you can do, like, you can map like special moves to your, to your buttons, to your face buttons, and like hold R one and then tap a face button, you'll do like a, a cool special move that'll cost a wee bit of mana or whatever, you know. Um, but yeah, like some of the, <laughs> just like here, here's just like a random boss encounter. Uh, you you get this wee girl character later on in the game, and. Uh, She's like, oh, I want, I want to meet my master, and I, and I want to get stronger, so I want, I want to train with him. And this, this is her master. <laughs> it's like a giant, old, like, cool parrot gorilla guy. <laughs> it's epic. Um, music, ah, oh, guys, this game, like, and see, in terms of music, Ease is probably one of the greatest examples of having like fantastic sort of upbeat metal kind of music in the background while you're fighting. Oh, man, it's, it's and and this 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 game's no you know no exception to that rule. Uh, Ease usually has extremely excellent excellent music, and this game is uh, kind of kind of follows that like exact same standard. Um, what else, man? Man, like I've I've got notes here in that. It's bloody sitting here writing notes. I wrote a bunch of notes. I've not even read them yet. Um, yeah, let me see. Oh yeah, totally. Like here we go. Like <laughs> some more stuff now. The game's got side quests, so as you're sort of building up your little vil fishing as well. Look at that. Some fishing guys. You like fishing? I like fishing. I enjoy fishing. Fishing's great. So the game's got side quests though. So you can talk to the the survivors of the the shipwreck. Like you start to build this little sort of castaway town thing, and uh, you start building up. Uh, like trust with these sort of like people who have survived the the crash on the on the on the island, and you start building like a little community, and like you can start talking to these people and like you can do uh, quests for them. Uh, one of them's an escort quest. Say uh, some <laughs> one one like really hoity toity guys wanting you to get them like some good food and things like that. Um, but you'll always get obviously get cool rewards and that'll affect the town in some way. Um, this thing here though, see this see this bit here? This is a totally amazing thing that like they've added to this game is a uh, your your little village needs defending. <laughs> so you've got these like scenarios where you've got to like uh, upgrade your like defenses and like fences and like uh, you've got like decoys that like all the animals will run up to and start eating the little bits of meat hanging off the decoys and things like that. So you upgrade all these things and uh, there's two different kinds of uh, defense to your town. Uh, you've got suppression. I've like I've, I've got it there. Like I'll, I'll, I'll write it on the side there. Suppression. Uh, that's essentially going out and destroying like massive packs of beasts, and uh, like annihilating them before they come out to start attacking your village. And then the other one is uh, oh, what's what's the word for it? <laughs> Suppression and inter interception. That's it. Uh, 
you've got interception ones where it's like if they if they do manage to get to the outskirts of your town and start attacking your town, here's the interception bit here, like on the on the on the sort of side uh, side lines of your little town here, and uh, you're able to you're able to defend your town, but you get like total tons like you see the score getting racking up at the side there and that, and that's all about a. Uh, like if you get really good scores, you get really good items. You get like you get all like all these benefits and all that for defending your town properly. These things are optional though. Like when they pop up, you can either do them or not. But like it's it's better to do them because you want to. You obviously want to get all the good items in that. But yeah, um, so total man. Yeah, you get like you get like really cool tangible results for. <laughs> look at the size of that boss. That this boss took me about fifteen minutes, by the way. It's absolutely amazing. Uh, yeah. So, I'm going to end the video with, uh, like, no story spoilers or anything, guys, but the, the game is essentially split up into two parts. You've got the bits with Adol Kristen, which is the main brunt of the game. Uh, you're kind of going about the island and all that. You're just stranded on the island with your little cool, your cool little troop of uh, followers and that. And, uh, bit. There, there's also like other little segments where it goes to the perspective of Dana, which is the the Dana from the Lacrimosa of Dana in the title, you know. Uh, so there's two main protagonists, but it's uh, it sort of f like flicks between their perspectives uh, occasionally, like sort of sort of during during the, the course of the chapters of the game. Um, it's interesting. I kind of prefer to like just kind of run around as adult, but I mean like the like like the where they go with the story and how they how they sort of merge the two stories together. It's really cool. It's really interesting. But uh, yeah, guys, that is my review of Ease Eight Lacrimosa of Dana. Uh, I really enjoyed the game. Heartily recommended for anybody who's a fan of uh, action games or RPGs or just a fan of Ease in the Ease in general. But that's it guys, thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.